Hi guys, quick video, just received this Invicta. It's a vintage Invicta, which I just purchased from eBay. Um, Non-working, spares or repairs. Now, quite often with old watches, I'm not an expert by the way, this is just a layman's kind of observation with buying some of these old watches, is when they need a service, they stop working. They get dirty, the bearings, the oil isn't working properly, so the, the movement kind of packs up. And the first thing people do is overwind them as well. So I noticed straight away that the watch was overwound. So I'm going to attempt two things. I've actually done one, I'm going to show you how I did that. And the other one we're going to attempt in a second. Now before I do this, this is a dis dis disclaimer. I was told about this trick and it does work but it may not be a long-term solution and it may do more damage than good. I would only think of doing this on a watch that is cheap, that you don't mind if the jewels fall out or it's suddenly, you made, you know, you've actually made the thing worse and it's, it's, you've really broken the movement. Um, but it's going to be a trick I do with lighter fuel, which I'll be showing you, which may get the watch working and I've been successful on a couple of occasions actually using WD-40 instead of lighter fuel, but this time I'm going to actually use lighter fuel because that's what was suggested to me. Um, but yeah, I have been told that yes, in occasions the um, lighter fuel can actually loosen the jewels which are fixed in with some kind of glue and it can possibly cause um, wear to the gears and um, this type of thing. So you definitely don't want to be doing this to your vintage Omega or Rolex or Breitling. This is for someone who's got an old watch, it's worth a few quid. You know, they're willing to try anything just to see if, it, if you can get it working again. And this might do the trick. Um, it might do it long term, it might do it short term. But it's interesting, um, I've heard uh, one of my uh, viewers said they did it and also they've been successful for a watch that's been in their drawer for years and now it's working again. So without further ado, I'll show you one, if you've got a wound watch, how you can unwind that. Okay, so you go to the back here, obviously I've got the back off. So that's the first thing you need to do. And where you have the stem, I'll zoom in. Now you see that big cog so you have the big cog, let me just bring my spring bar tool over. So next to the big cog, come on, focus down you, yeah, next to the big cog, there's a little lever which moves across and goes into the teeth. So as the, the um, cog goes around, the um, tooth fits into the teeth and stops it going back so when you wind it it's a like a, a, a non-return I don't know what the exact name is for it so I'm trying to zoom in I'm there's no light now I've just got the um, lights on in my room let's zoom in a bit more yeah you can see it's like a little lever that you can push over and then it will release this bigger cog which will unwind so you have to make sure that you've got a hand, a finger, or a couple of fingers on your crown or onto that wheel because it can unwind very quickly and that can destroy the spring, the mainspring. So, but if you can let it unwind controlled, then you've unwound the watch, which is overwound, which I've managed to do on this one. This was very stiff, actually. I ended up having to backwind the crown. So I moved the um, lever across and it didn't unwind. Sometimes they unwind very fast with a whoop and it's done. So, sorry, light. Oh, trying to do this for you guys. All right. So let me just see if I can put this on um, a stand and show you what I did. One sec. Okay, so I've got the phone camera um, on a car bracket because I've ordered a tripod. It's not arrived yet. So I've got a bit of bit of a budget device to hold the phone. So here's, I'm going to do some, bring over the spring bar connector. And what you're doing is using the spring bar connect uh, tool, sorry. 
put your thumb on that cog and then you're going to push right one second right push that push that lever down I'll do that again because I was looking at the watch and not the screen this is not easy right so I pull that lever down and then that cog would unwind but in my case it's so stiff whilst I was pulling that down I actually back wound the crown and that did the job as well but quite often that will spin very quickly so you have to catch it otherwise the mainspring could um, get damaged and it would just be like a mess and that would be that okay so now we have some wind as you can see you can see what it does now as that cog rotates that goes into the teeth to stop it going backwards so you're just releasing that cog and then it unwinds so that's how you, most watches will have something like that that you can um, lever back and unwind an overwound watch okay so getting on to the lighter fuel trick okay so let me pick up this phone one second okay so getting back onto the lighter fuel trick what we are going to do, or what I'm going to attempt right now for you, is, as you can see, the watch is not working. So it has some wind to it, and it's not working. If I touch the balance wheel, it may work momentarily. Let's have a look. And this you have to do very gently, because you don't want to damage the, the balance wheel. So using the spring bar tool, I'm just going to give it a tiny nudge, and off it goes. Now, see, it's stopped. Now, I think the reason it's stopping is because the bearing lubrication is well past its sell-by date, and it's just not free enough to um, run freely. So the trick is to reinvigorate the oil that's underneath the jewels to give it, to reintroduce um, viscosity, viscosity to it. Apparently, with some light and fuel, if you put a, a drop onto the um, case lid, the back here, not onto the uh, movement itself, but we're going to place a drop onto here, pop the back back on, and then we're going to introduce some heat. Now I've got a heated throw, so I'll wrap it into a heated throw for 10 minutes, but I guess you could place it on top of a radiator, perhaps wrapped in a cloth. Um, you don't want to cook the thing, but you need you want to be heating it up because what we want to happen is the lighter uh, fluid to atomize, to vaporize inside the watch from the back plate and get to where we want it under those jewels and to uh, get that oil, the properties back in the oil and hopefully it may work. So let's do that. Okay, so I'll just put a drop of oil on the case back. Oh, flooded it. Absolutely flooded it. One second. Too much. Now I'm blaming because I'm trying to hold a phone in the left hand and do it all cack handed. I just flooded it. But I've poured some of that off and just left a smear which you probably can't even see. Let me see in the light. Yeah, you can see it's, it's, it's gone to the bottom of the rim. So there is like a good drop in there. So what we'll do is put the, the back back on and I'll pop that into the heated throw. Pop the back back on. I think that's on properly. Yeah, I think that's on. Okay, so let's put it, let's make sure it's home. Okay, we'll stick that in the heated throw. Okay, so I've got a heated throw here. Ignore the uh, packing tape. I stepped on this and um, 
the uh, wire was starting to come adrift slightly, but it's safe. And um, I got it on heat setting eight, which is one lower than the highest. And it's a nice fleecy throw. I'm gonna wrap it in there for 10 minutes. So I'll give that a good 10 minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Let's have a look and see what we got. Give it a little shake, give it a start. Is it gonna work? All right, hang on. Feels nice and warm. Let's just see. Give it a little bit of a wind because I did unwind it quite a lot. Oh, we're going. We are going. Wow. Okay, so there you see. Is it going to stop? We were going. Let's give it a shake. It might need a little bit longer. It wasn't working at all before. Now we have some action. Will it carry on working? That's the question. It might need a bit more heat. Well, I'll say that's it does seem to be working for the moment. So I've just come back to the table. Hopefully, a little bit better light here. Let's put it down. Also a cold bit of glass, which will probably make it stop. Yeah, I didn't like that. So I think it still needs a bit of heat. It's certainly working a lot better. Right, let's give it a little few more minutes with a bit more heat. Okay, so a little bit more heat. I actually put it on top of my radiator for a couple of minutes, which isn't red hot. I got it... Um, it's like a little cross section because it's a double radiator. I just sat it on there. So the back plate was getting quite warm. And that seems to have done the trick. I think it's atomized the uh, lighter fluid that was in there and got it where it needs to be. It's been running for a few minutes now. I've actually put it onto this placemat. I don't want to put it, it's very cold room at the moment, um, straight onto the back of the glass. It might, um, make the metal shrink a bit too quick and make it stop again. So I just want to let it get up to room temperature gradually. And it's running. So as I said before, big disclaimer, please do not try this with your granddad's Rolex, Omega, whatever. But if you've got an old watch that isn't really worth that much money, certainly not worth spending hundreds of pounds getting it serviced, and Perhaps it's overwound, it stopped working. Within a few minutes, I've unwound it. A couple of drops of lighter fluid on the back plate. Put it on some heat and the thing's working. So how long it'll work for, I'm not 100% sure. But if it's reactivated the oil, then perhaps it will work for some time. So it's quite a cool little trick for something you don't mind if you break because as someone said the jewels are held in with oil the lighter fluid may well dislodge those sorry the jewels are held in with glue not oil might well uh, cause a problem with those and perhaps it could cause a problem with where in the mechanism itself um, this isn't an over complicated watch but it is a nice movement and it's nice to see that going so my little um, Invicta watch, which I think I think cost me nine pounds, not working, overwound. Ten minutes later, working. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Let me know if you managed to get your old cheap watch that's not been working for years going with this. Again, be very careful. You just need a couple of drops 
you don't want to have a huge amount and otherwise you're going to end up misting the um, glass up and if you do miss the uh, glass up the the, uh, the crystal up which I've done in the past before when I've been cleaning a good tip is keep the crown out turn it around and put it on some heat or in a heated blanket and the moisture will rise obviously from the um, crystal and hopefully escape out the um, crown hole and that's quite a quick way of getting I mean, also you could take the back off as well that would be even quicker um, but yeah but all the time it's like that the moisture is going to rise and go onto the crystal um, but if you reverse it with some heat hopefully you can kind of steam it and get it out that's a nice little watch now I will be giving that a bit of a clean up and probably a separate video on this watch an update to see if it's still going I'm now going to try this trick on a couple of other watches which I've got laying around which I couldn't get working properly I tried the WD-40 doing the same thing but it didn't work so I may be thinking actually lighter fluid might work where that didn't anyway guys thanks for watching take care bye bye